In my job running the microbrand store, uh, we carry over 30 brands and we often assess a very large number of other watches from other microbrands, maybe four or five times the number that we carry. So I do get to go hands on with quite a few watches every year. And I have to say, this is one of the most interesting divers I've seen this year. It's a first offering from a new microbrand, uh, Iconic Timepieces, uh, which are US based. And uh, it's the Hampton Bay and is going to be out on Kickstarter, I believe, on March the 1st. And I'm just so excited about this one. There's a couple of watches this year that are really exciting me to the point where if we don't carry them in the store, then I'm definitely going to be backing them on Kickstarter. Uh, one of them is a uh, February watch on Kickstarter, which is um, the Dorenzo DRZ03, also another diver. And then there's this one here. And this one here so far is, in my opinion, my favorite microbrand dive watch that I've seen come out this year. So very excited to be sharing this with everyone. I'll be doing my usual review, pros and cons. I definitely have cons as well as pros. There's no perfect watch out there. Um, I'm definitely going to be getting one of these for myself. We're also going to be trying to carry this in the microbrand store as well because we like it that much. So, you know, just as a fair disclosure to everyone um having said that i always give an unbiased review no matter what because i'd rather have an informed bias i'm going to say the pros and the cons obviously i like this one a lot but I think you can decide for yourself i just try and cover uh, features and be less subjective perhaps in this review just to give it a fair whack um and uh, well let's get stuck in i only have two of the colors here and keep in mind these are prototypes there will be some production differences which i'll explain as well they will be coming carrying coming in a carry case uh, like this one, but with the uh, branding on it of the company uh, of um, iconic timepieces. And in addition to the watch, which is going to come on a bracelet, you can probably guess here from these uh, couple of bracelet links. It's also going to be coming on a NATO strap as well, and it'll have a uh, pin tool for uh, adjusting the size of the bracelet, which I also would like to talk about um, when we get into the watch. So let's open these up, take a first look. I'll point out some of the things uh, that make this interesting. And uh, the case, by the way, might not be the prettiest of cases. You often get these oblong travel cases. This one, I think, is actually more practical if you're going to take a single watch. First of all, uh, it's smaller than, a, than an oblong case. Uh, and then the second thing is, if you've got something on a bracelet, sometimes it's not so easy to put them in there. This is very well secured. It's well padded underneath and on top. The bracelet's not going to move. You could even keep a NATO strap or another strap in there. Or if you had a strap in there that was uh, maybe not a bracelet, for example, but uh, maybe a butterfly clasp, you don't want to keep undoing it to travel with it. Um, it's actually very practical. So I like these. I don't often see these as a choice for a micro brand. So it's nice to see them. Obviously, you can buy them separately on your own, somewhere like AliExpress. Uh, but to get one of these... Uh, is is really nice. I think this is going to be a rather practical choice. So uh, my hat's off already to uh, Iconic for coming up with this or being brave enough to do this rather than the more uh, standard design that you tend to get with cases. It might not be as elegant as some, but it's, it's extremely practical and lightweight. And this is very rigid, so it's not moving. It's, it's, it's solid with a very soft foam interior. You can, uh, you know, get an idea. Uh, anyway... So enough about the case. Uh, let's talk about the watches. I do not have the NATO straps, so I can't tell you what those would look like at this point. Um, but there's um, a couple of colors here. These were not my choices of color to review, to be honest. There are actually four colors. I'll put a picture up on the screen. There is a um, kind of a gray color, which goes extremely well with the bracelet because, you know, different sh tones of gray. Um, would really pick up well on a bracelet. That's my personal favorite. Uh, there's this, oh, they call it the um, seafoam green. It's really a blue green. It's kind of an ocean blue green color. There is a more bluer version uh, than that. And there's this sand color as well, a kind of a salmon sand color. Um, so that one, you know, they're kind of interesting uh, color choices. They're all Fume dials, which means they start darker on the outside and get lighter towards the center. Uh, I'm just going to pick this one up for conversation's uh, uh, sake. And uh, let's start looking at some of these features. I'm just going to move these hands so you can take a better look at them because they're kind of close together. Anyway, let's just pop 
pop them like that. That'll do. And so, so obviously, uh, some of the features you're probably noticing already. The first one that almost everybody's going to spot is the bezel is white. It is a sapphire crystal bezel. Uh, with a fully loomed reverse loom bezel. So all this white is actually fully loomed. It's going to be BGW9 in production. And I believe right now it's uh, C3, but it's all Swiss Super Luminova. So you're going to get a fully reverse loomed bezel where the um, uh, minute and markers are black and, and everything else is loomed. Uh, the, obviously, the hands and the major indices are loomed as well. And I actually, just talking about the hands, I think it's just absolutely um, an outstanding design choice here. You've got kite-shaped uh, major indices at uh, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. You've also got the same kite shape uh, at, the, at the hour markers as well. And uh, and it really is mirrored on the hands, which you see here. You might have seen some pictures of this watch up on places like Facebook. You know, the campaign started a few months ago in advance of Kickstarter. And those would have been of a different version. It's the same prototype watch, but he had thinner hands. These hands here are much more uh, similar to the kite. They're not actually kite shaped. They're more like kind of sword shaped but they really reflect very well the indices. So that's a great choice. And also you've got a kind of a diamond semi-kite shape uh, marker on the second hand. And a nice touch on the back of the second hand here, the counterweight is the iconic logo, which is iconic timepieces, an I and a T together, kind of almost like an anchor. Um, somebody mentioned, uh, who's seen some of the photos online, that oh, they thought the icon was a bit large. Uh, and I actually have another watch to compare because the thing about seeing online with photos, it's never the same as a real watch on your wrist, which everything looks a lot smaller. So just to compare, this is another 43 millimeter watch. This is a 43 millimeter diver. And this is my Christopher Ward. So you can see, uh, yeah, I guess Christopher Ward has issues with its uh, logo too, at least in the newer versions. This is a nice older one with the old London logo. Um, but you can get a comparable size Iconic isn't too big. It isn't too too loud. I think Hampton Bay could be a bit smaller, same as they've got the Trident for the Christopher Ward watch on the right. But they are going to be making changes. Uh, I know they're going to be changing the 200 meter water rating wording uh, to make that uh, a little bit different. So they possibly might resize the wording of the Hampton Bay. That would make enough of a difference, I think. I actually like the logo. Uh, it's simple, it's clean. There's lots of white space on the dial due to the Fumi effect. So uh, if you had something smaller, I don't. I think actually it would be better the way it is. It gives a little bit more interest to the dial. If it was a sunburst dial, I could see you not wanting to do that, but it's a Fumi dial, so I think it works quite nicely. So uh, obviously you've got kind of a kite shape up here on the uh, bezel. Uh, the bezel is actually really nice, really impressed with that. Absolutely no back play. It's slightly stiff without being too stiff, uh, so you're not going to accidentally knock it. Um, very easy to line up. The grip is not sharp. I like that, but it's a coin edge grip the whole way around. So I can grab, grip this super nice, very easy to use, exactly what I would like to see. Uh, let me give you the rest of the dimensions before I get into what I like and don't like a bit more. So I mentioned it's a 43 millimeter diameter. I measured it from here to here, um, trying to avoid the crown guard, and it came out at exactly 43 millimeters. So that's exactly on spot on according to the specs. The uh, lug to lug length, and that one's really interesting. It's only 49 millimeters. Keeping in mind this is a 43 millimeter diameter watch. You'd see 49 millimeters on a 40 millimeter watch. Uh, so this wears, uh, even though uh, this is a 43, right? And I have about a seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, probably right now it's a seven inch wrist. I've lost a, lot of re lost a lot of weight recently. But this wears, I can just about wear this. You can see with the lug, lug ends here. Um, but if I was to put one of these on my wrist here, uh, just to do a quick compare, um, because they're sh because it's shorter, this this should wear a lot more e uh, easily, um, definitely more easily than uh, I would normally wear. Um, a <laughs> so I'll rephrase that. So I've got a lot more space here on, um, on my wrist. Uh, so you know you could wear this probably. 
let's say I have a seven inch wrist right now. I normally seven and a half, but say it's seven inch. I think you could probably wear this on a six and a half inch wrist, no problem. So this will work on a somebody whose wrist who prefers a smaller size, like a 40 or 42. This actually would work, which is super nice. I think the trend seems to be towards shorter uh, lug length. Uh, also, I found that on uh, another watch I reviewed recently, the uh, one I mentioned at the start of this video, the um, uh, Dorenzo DLZ03 also has short lug, uh, lug length. And it makes a nice difference because this has a lot of wrist presence. You know, the diameter is still uh, nice and beefy at 43. People like the larger watches. I find them easy to read. Um, they look super nice as well. Um, so this will work for somebody with a larger wrist. It will not look small. But at the same time, you could wear this with a smaller wrist because what really counts is the width, the height here, the width of your wrist, not not the diameter here. So, so it's really the lug length that counts the most. Everyone tends to look at the diameter and that's just a rough indication. So the fact that this is 43 millimeters, don't let that put you off. I think it looks really nice at the current size of... Um, so I'm just trying to do this up at the same time uh, of uh, it's a little bit loose. I haven't resized this one of um, 43 millimeters. It will work super well. The height on this is claimed to be 13 millimeters. And that's a lot less than you'd normally expect on a 200 meter diver. 16 millimeters is more the norm. And I measured it at 13.2. So again, with, that includes the sapphire crystal uh, uh, and everything else right from the bottom of the screw, screw crown to the top of the sapphire crystal. So 13.2 millimeters, this is going to sit fairly flat on your wrist. It doesn't uh, have too much bulk. So it's a kind of a watch you could wear kind of a semi-dressy diver, I guess, which again puts it in the same kind of ballpark as another Swiss watch the we're talking about, the uh, <clears throat> Dorenzo DRZ03. That perhaps may be this watch's main competitor. The Dorenzo comes out about a month before on Kickstarter. Personally, I would want both. Um, and out of all the... Um, dive watches I've seen this year. These are my two favorites. And uh, this one is at the top of the list um, and I think edges out the DRZ03 slightly, uh, but they're both, it's, that's just a matter of subjective taste. And I, I think they both have a lot to offer, um, but they both have a, a pros and cons, not just, uh, so it's not smooth sailing for either of them. So let's get into some of the um, other features of this watch and what I do and don't like. Uh, so let's see, what have, what have we covered here? One year warranty as opposed to maybe a two year, which seems to be the norm. But it's a Swiss Solid SW200 uh, movement. So uh, you have no trouble getting that service pretty much anywhere. So I don't think that's really a big issue. Um, I've obviously got a date window at four o'clock. I tend to like to sit more balanced somewhere like six o'clock. Um, but I, the reason for that is these these indices are very... Uh, long so we didn't want to interfere with the markings there i get that didn't want to put it at three it keeps it nice so it does keep the indices balanced at least so i think that works um might not be an ideal but it, it works pretty well for me um and i'm normally fussy about that so it does come on a solid link bracelet we talked about the uh, colors let's talk about the pricing before i get into the rest of it so you can keep keep things in mind before we go any further now on kickstarter this is a steal really it's 452 dollars for the first 24 hours that will be march the first um and um so 452 dollars for a swiss movement watch with a nice solid link bracelet pretty decent price obviously you know there are some are more expensive some are cheaper but it's a very good price for kickstarter and then if you miss the first 24 hours but you still want to come in on the kickstarter campaign that goes up to 480 dollars for the remainder of the kickstarter so that's the pre-order pricing the full retail pricing is also not too bad i could have seen this at uh, 799 dollars given a lot of features like the uniqueness of the the hands and the indices combined the rever the what the really ice white uh uh bezel with a reverse loom on it i mean there's a fume down and so on i would have seen this at higher but 675 dollars is a very good retail price these will sell at that price i can tell you that running a watch store that sells watches at retail price as well as on pre-order so i have no doubt these will sell i don't remember right now if this is going to be a limited edition we will see um, but it's a really nice design. Now let's get into some of the negatives because I like to cover those as well as the positives. And really then my negatives for me revolve around the bracelet a little bit. It is a really nice fled design. 
uh, on on <laughs> so it kind of adds to the watch. I really like that. Um, and the uh, short lug length is also excellent. Um, and you can see it curves at the top very nicely here in the same style of the lugs. But the end links on the bracelet come out further than the lugs. So that's an issue that needs to be addressed. I imagine as these are prototypes, it will be addressed before production. And they probably haven't had time to do so right now. So just making these uh, end links exactly match the case that will be a huge difference because it's quite noticeable for me. Um, the other issue, and uh, that was not a sh showstopper necessarily, but it's it's a strong issue for me, uh, but one that might be a showstopper for a few people, and I'm going to point this out, so I'm sure that they'll address it before the campaign. So um, don't, don't walk away from this if you like the watch because it is a phenomenal design. And that is the fact that uh, I've taken out all the pins, the, all the links that can be removed. You normally have holes and you can you know take a tool such as this one you'll be getting one tool when you buy the watch to kind of push this pin into the hole and push out the uh push out the link so that they come out the other end um and that's how you take out a link so you need um kind of holes like there's one here this is a bit beaten up as it's a prototype other people have had so i could take this link out and separate it and then i can take this end one out as well but really I can't take out any of the other ones here, and I've already taken out two. So keeping in mind my wrist now right now is about seven um, uh, inches, you know, seven and a half normally, 19, but seven inches. I've made this um, as thin as I can, uh, but I still have a lot of space here. I really, this this can easily just accidentally go around on the wrong side of my wrist if, I, if I'm uh, not careful. I don't mind a little bit of a loose watch, but this is just too much space here. So my issue, and this is a showstopper as is, but will not be a showstopper if they address it, which I believe they should, is that on a watch that's for a medium-sized person's wrist, say mine's seven inches right now, um, you can't resize the bracelet any smaller than at least seven and a half inches, and that's still wearing it loose, I would think. So a seven and a half inch would be the uh, minimum size on the current bracelet, but I'm sure that they're going to address that. The fact that I'm going to bring this up with them, the guy I've been working with has been super responsive. Uh, Ivan Ennis, the, uh, the gentleman behind this brand, he's a watch reviewer himself, uh, so he knows the market pretty well. And uh, we've been going collaborating on this for quite some, quite a long time now, actually. So initially, I was pointing out, oh, you know, the hands are a little bit thin, and he fattened up the hands. They work so much better with the bezel. So we pointed out some features. He's been very receptive to that. So I think if I mention, hey, we need a few more links that can be removed because these two can't, uh, and these two can't as well, and you, you need, and this end one is the one that connects to the buckle, then uh, you know he might actually. It's an easy fix. They could actually arrange that. I'm sure he could, as this is a custom bracelet, pretty much. Uh, the buckle on the end, it is a milled clasp, which is nice. Again, this is beaten up, so my apologies for that. It has. Uh, you can't really change these two positions. I tried it on the inner one, but then the clasp will not lock and close. Uh, but you have three micro adjustments here, and I've got this on the innermost one because this is a little too big for my wrist. So on a seven-inch wrist, it's not going to work. If I was back at my seven and a half inch size, it might just work, but it would be a little bit loose. But you get an idea how this would wear anyway. And obviously we would, uh, you, you'd come with a NATO strap and you can easily, with a 22 millimeter lug width, sorry if I didn't mention that, you can easily put in any aftermarket strap that you want that's 22 millimeters. So works really well. I love the design of the bracelet otherwise. I love a fully brushed finished. I much prefer that on a bracelet than say this one which is a mix of brushed and polished the reason is because you're going to get fingerprints pretty much all over the polish immediately um, i mean and you can also tell the scratches much more easily on this this one's been well worn but still you can spot these scratches at a distance these ones not so much so a uh, brush bracelet gives you a little bit of fingerprint protection and in, and scratch protection in terms of hiding them a lot better so i think that has better longevity it also uh, looks very stylish as well uh, on the watch itself on the case it's all 316 uh, stainless steel so marine grade uh, surgical grade stainless steel 
there is actually a polished edge that's not the screw down crown so there is a polished chamfered edge at the bottom which i don't think anybody would notice I, um the sides are very plain but again that's brushed very simple very straightforward and uh I think it, it, it's very clean looking, so I'm quite happy with that. If you are going to put a polished uh, edge on it just as an accent, I would have liked to see one underneath the bezel, the same one as one as one here, and just on the tops of the bezel, which you often get on other watch designs. So you get a mix of polished uh, and brushed finishes. Uh, does this one have it? It has it here uh, a little bit, but um, you don't pick that up so much, so it's really not a big deal. Uh, just a nice to have but overall a super nice watch i'm really happy with uh the design i think the colors are going to be very very subjective i'm really totally liking the gray color uh but i don't have this here to show which is a pity these are not my color choices these will be actually my last two but having said that they also go so well with a number of other straps it's not that difficult to match these up and it's nice to have more color choices in your collection so i think this one could be popular as an unusual color choice and this goes well with a blue and with a green so i'm happy with either of those um let's just i'm going to grab some straps here just to play with uh this is on the fly on the cuff here so i hadn't kind of planned this out so i've um a few strap boxes um uh, kind of folders with tons of different straps in them that i use just for i guess photo shoots or something else when uh, when you run a store you want to photograph some watches so let's just do a quick match up really quick um but let's see i think this one just for now would go so just see let's see what this would look like on a on a strap maybe give it give a rough idea um you notice the flare on the sides, but that's kind of makes it interesting. So this isn't the exact right color, but it just gives you a rough idea what this could look like. And then on the blue one, that blue, uh, well, green one, I guess it's got a bit of gray in it as well, I think. So maybe a gray strap, something like that. It gives you an idea what, what it might look like. Um, I could probably mount these on some uh, straps to do some photos, which I'll put up later on uh, Facebook or elsewhere. But anyway, it gives a rough idea what... Um, what these could look like on straps the bracelet is where it's at though of course especially with this lovely flare on the lugs i really like that so this watch has a lot of unusual features on it it's nicely finished you've got a signed crown screw down crown screw down case back uh it's a uh, nice deep engraving on uh for the logo very clean very simple i like this it's going to be on your wrist so it's a functional tool watch with a lot of style and a lot of unique features. So you want a watch that's a little bit different, a little bit outside the ballpark. Uh, then you've got this very noticeable uh, ice white uh, full reverse loom dial, which uh, sorry, full reverse loom bezel, which is going to look awesome in the dark. Um, as a talking point, you've got the uh, f flare on the lugs, uh, really nicely done watches. So I would think uh, overall. Uh, this has a lot going for it. I think this is a contender for so far out of all the watches I've handled that are dive watches. This is probably my number one choice, followed extremely closely by the Dorenzo DRZ02, oh, sorry, 03, uh, which is another watch coming out roughly the same time, just a little bit ahead of this one. So uh, if you miss this in uh, Kickstarter or maybe you uh, are maxed out on your purchases at the moment, uh, we will be trying to carry this to the microbrand store so hopefully there'll be a window you can get some pre-orders in there too and we'll try and sort that out um get that up during the campaign but as with all of our campaigns we never run them when a brand runs on kickstarter because we uh, never want to compete with kickstarter because it's just unfair on the brand we want them to maximize their own sales don't want to cannibalize their customers so um i hopefully we'll be carrying this uh, i really think we will we've kind of worked out on the pricing we love the design we're just probably at the stage where we just need to close the deal at this point so lovely watches if you have any questions do let me know you can put them in the comments uh, or send me a message some other way uh, you can always ask a uh, direct at the microbrand store microbrand.store um, there's a contact us page there or you can talk to us on Facebook Messenger or send us an email or something like that. So whatever's easiest for you guys, do let me know and I'll try and get them addressed if I can. These watches are going off to the next reviewer. 
Um, and uh, again, these are prototypes. Let me cover the other differences. I hadn't mentioned those, uh, just talk about those very briefly. So uh, the logo is going to be a stainless steel applied logo that's properly centered. Um, in fact, this one's better because uh, <coughs> hands have been moved out of the way. So I think that would look nice as long as it's not any larger. I think the current size is good. It's tempting just to have the logo or just the word iconic and not have both, but that's fine if you want to do both. Um, the bracelet style is going to be a Grand Seiko style bracelet with a taper from 22 millimeters at the lugs to 18 at the clasp. I'm not sure if this is the new bracelet yet, so let's just take a quick look. Um, that is 22. And let's go down here. Ah, okay, so that is also 22. So this one is not tapering. So this isn't, so there will be some differences in the bracelet. So given that, that's a great opportunity to fix the resizing issue. Apart from that, by the way, it's really easy to resize. Uh, no trouble with these push pins. Uh, so the bracelet will taper to 80 millimeters at the class. That will accent this even more. I kind of like that. Um, they mentioned the wording of automatic 200 meters will be configured for better visibility and balance. Hopefully that means they'll address Hampton Bay as well. And then the other thing is the loom. It's going to be BGW9, which is a blue loom in the dark. Uh, all these are Swiss Supuma. Right now it's uh, C3. Um, I need to t probably turn some lights off, off just to give you an idea and close close the blinds, but we, I can put up some existing shots. Uh, but it's a C3, um, and we've already got the new hands on these. These have the newer hands, not the uh, thinner hands that uh, other watches have. In fact, you can see the difference. So the one on my left here, has the thicker hands and the one on the right has the old thinner hands. So these hands on the right are being replaced with the ones on the left. Huge difference uh, as well as stronger loom because there's more surface area. Um, they really, that our hand matches very well with the uh, major indices. So really like that. Uh, there's also talk about a diver's extension. That will be very welcome. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. This is your typical safety clasp. Uh, style, we just uh, fold it over, close it, and then it's got a safety lock there. Um, I prefer um, a diver's extensions for resizing rather than having to kind of push in these pins. It's easy enough to push in the pins with a either, I don't know, maybe the end of a paper clip might be too too thick, but maybe with a little um, kind of pin tack or you've got a tool like this or something. Um, so it's really easy to resize. Um, the micro adjustments on these, but at the same time, you might want to do that on the fly. And having a diver's extension normally means you can push in some buttons or some other way, like a glide lock, and then resize. This one has a diver's extension as well, a different brand here. This is a Christopher Ward. So uh, it doesn't work as elegantly as pushing in a button or, or a Rolex glide lock, but you, I pretty much pull back this button here. I'm trying to do this through the camera. Or do I push it down? Uh, I'm so used to doing... Oh, sorry, wrong end. Uh, uh, <coughs> start again. Yep. So I just pull it, and then I can pull this in and out and let go wherever I want. So that gives me the equivalent to the micro adjustments of about an inch. And then if uh, I'm wearing it and I'm finding... Maybe like with me, your weight's changed, or maybe you're wor are working and you want to wear it loose because you're typing on a keyboard all day in a hot office... Or maybe you want to tighten it up because you're going to the gym and you don't want it rattling around and moving everywhere. Uh, then, you know, it's easy. You don't need any tools with these micro adjustments. Uh, you can just literally use a diver's extension adjustment and however it works. And in that case, I pushed it in. So now this is going to be a, a tighter fit. And you've got, you know, two or three stops. So that's just right. If I'm going to exercise, this thing is not going anywhere on my wrist, which is what I would want if I'm being very active. So, um, yeah. I think uh, it, that is going to be a nice feature that's just going to take this over the edge. So if the bracelet is addressed, it's thinner, diver's extension, they address the resizing issue. Um, I just think that's going to really knock this one out of the ballpark. And apart from that, I really don't have any complaints. It's an extremely well boot watch. The uh, movement in this watch, Swissly to SW200-1, uh, is, is an awesome movement, very reliable movement. And uh, it's a great Swiss watch, and the pricing on this is excellent. So this is a buy for me. 
Um, I'll probably be keeping one in the store if we, uh, probably the gray one that I mentioned, but I'm going to look at all the colors when they come in before I decide on that. And uh, you guys can have fun picking out your color on Kickstarter. Thanks a, a lot. quick mere culpa here. I actually was able to remove one more link. There was a, another link uh, pin hidden underneath the clasp. So I uh, can wear this on a seven inch wrist. It's uh, perfectly sized for seven inches right now. So um, my point still stands, however. Uh, the fact that you have such a nice short uh, lug to lug length, 49 millimeters, means you could wear this on a six and a half inch wrist if you could remove one more link. So I will still give that as feedback. Um, again, I think that's probably going to be addressed because they're already going to come up with a slightly different custom uh, bracelet that tapers down to 18 millimeters <clears throat> all the way from 22. Since they're going from 22 to 20, it'll be 22 to 18. Right now, this is 22 to 22. Um, so I think I, nobody, you know, people shouldn't have an issue with that. Um, and it looks pretty nice. I just wanted to get on this uh, the whole shot finally. You can uh, get an idea what this looks like. Uh, indoor lighting is not that great. There's a lot of reflection, but it has a very nice anti-reflective coating, so it's doing pretty well. Uh, so there we have it, the Hampton Bay uh, from Iconic Timepieces. And I'm loving this more and more the more I wear it, so I'm definitely going to be adding one to my collection, and I'm almost certainly going to go for the grey colour one. Um, that is going to be a keeper for me. Okay, thanks again for watching. Thanks a lot. Take care.